People of Royal Oak Community, United Methodist Church, do not fear the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> do not fear the zombie apocalypse. All right, no, I'm not crazy. The sermon title this morning is, The first man was of dust of the earth, and the second man is of the spirit of heaven. I took my sermon title from our text. And we are in the season of Epiphany, and Epiphany is continuing a season of revelations in our minds and hearts. And the revelation this morning is again from Paul's letter to the Corinthians. And no, you do not need to fear the zombie apocalypse. But here's why. Several weeks ago in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Paul was talking about the resurrection of Jesus. And there were people in the church who were denying the resurrection of the body of Jesus. That was the first part of chapter 15. But in the second half of chapter 15, Paul is talking about the resurrection of believers. First half, resurrection of Jesus. Second half, the chapter we read this morning, that is about the resurrection of the believers in Jesus. And this was vitally important to the people in the church in Corinth because they were fixated on dead bodies. At the time of Jesus, the average human lifespan was only 35 years on average. 50% of the children who were born died before they were 10 years old. The people of Corinth were very familiar with death and disease. And they were tired of corpses. They were repulsed by corpses. And so many people thought initially when Paul was thought, talking about the resurrection that it really wasn't a real resurrection. It was more like a corpse that had been revived. And none of the people in Corinth wanted to be a revived, walking, dead, zombie corpse. Who would? But what Paul was doing was teaching them again and again that as Jesus' body died on the cross, was put in the tomb, and then resurrected from the dead as a living, breathing, healthy, whole body, that also the resurrection of Jesus opens the door for the resurrection of each of the followers of Jesus. He was trying to convince the people in Corinth, and they were a tough sell, that no, when you die in Jesus, you will not be some kind of resurrected walking corpse, but you will have life eternal in a heavenly body that is imperishable. The glorious resurrection of Jesus' body was also available to the people in the church in Corinth. If they died in Christ, they would be living again in a glorious resurrection in Christ. And so the good news that Paul was trying to convey is not that we become walking zombies, but that we are transformed, completely and totally transformed into a body that has not been corrupted by sickness by anger, by fear, by sin, or by death. Paul is preaching a transformation in Jesus for each of us, and we in that transformation into our heavenly bodies will also conquer sin and will also conquer death. So dear God, please come into my mind and heart this morning let this crucial text be clear in the minds and hearts of this, your beloved community, here at Royal Oak Community. 
please let them understand that you offer a glorious and resurrected life. And this is by the example of Jesus. And we give thanks for this in Jesus' name. Amen. So how did Paul do this? You know, this text in Corinthians is a bit hard to follow, but he keeps saying the same thing again and again. He knows it's hard to follow, and he wants people to get it. So one thing he does is he does what Jesus did. When Jesus was preaching, he often went to the agricultural world and used agricultural images because he understood that the people at that time would understand things about farming and planting and the earth and the weather. And so Paul encourages us to think about the difference between seeds and the plants they produce. Remember the mustard seed? The mustard seed is extraordinarily tiny. And yet, when the mustard seed is put into the earth and dies, air quotes, it then is resurrected and transformed into a glorious plant that offers shade and shelter. Those of you that have a garden in your yard know that resurrection happens frequently in a garden. For every seed you put into the earth and watch that seed be buried and die, you then have a plant that blossoms gloriously. Paul is talking about this in verses 36 and 37. How foolish! What you sow does not come to life unless it dies. When you sow, you do not plant the body that will be, just the seed. Do you see how simple this is? The seed planted in the ground has to die before it can come up, before it can be resurrected. One of the most beautiful things about God's creation is that God's creation completely hangs together and has a complete message of love and grace. Nature is showing us over and over again, especially as we are going closer and closer to spring, that those things that we think are dead are coming up again and they are resurrecting and they are living. If any of you have flower bulbs in your yard, then you know how exciting it is when the weather starts to turn and the ground gets warm to see what happens. And sometimes you even forget you have bulbs or you forget where you plant them. And one morning, there's one, there's one, there's one. Nature is telling us, as the word of God is telling us, that when something dies in God, it is resurrected in a new form in God. In verses 43 and 44, I read this, a body that is sown in weakness is raised in power. It is sown as a natural body. In other words, our bodies when we die, but it is raised as a spiritual body. In other words, we are resurrected in Jesus. The first man was the dust of the earth. But the second man is the spirit of heaven. And this resurrection happens to children of God. Consider that there are two Adam creation events in the Bible. Now, I never considered this until this past week. We all know about Adam 1. Adam 1 was formed as a living body with a soul. God breathed into the earth. At Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, then the Lord formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. Well, that was us. But the second Adam of creation. The second Adam was the resurrected Jesus. At Adam, at the creation, that was the representative person for all of us who have an earthly body, but the resurrected Jesus was the representative person for all of us who one day will have a spiritual or a heavenly body. 
the resurrection of Jesus to mortality, you could say was a new creation event. First Adam at the creation of the world. Second Adam, Jesus resurrected on Easter. A new creation event. But have you ever wondered what form our bodies will take after the resurrection of our bodies? Are you kind of thinking, you know, I'm not going to go to the gym now because once I get resurrected, it's all going to be taken care of. Why spend the money or the time? I'm not going to avoid the donuts because, you know, when we're resurrected, it's all going to be good. Well, no one knows exactly what form our resurrected bodies will take. But, but, the scriptures tell us, and Reverend Brian Finlayson also gives us some clues, and here's one insight. Our resurrected bodies will have continuity. They're going to be old but new. That's a conundrum. Our old self will still be able to recognize ourselves in our new self. And I wouldn't mind being that age in my resurrected body, tell you the truth. <laughs> there will also be a transformation. Our old self is gone. Our new self will be there. Think of a caterpillar. A caterpillar, I can't imagine a caterpillar ever thinks that someday it's going to fly. But then the caterpillar transforms into a chrysalis. And then the chrysalis transforms into a butterfly. So our new bodies will have continuity, transformation, and they will be spiritual. They will be spiritual because Paul tells us in the script we read, scripture we read, they will be imperishable, glorious, and spiritual. And finally, our heavenly resurrected bodies will be Christ-like. Because the most profound truth, the most important truth, even more important than good abs in terms of our resurrected body, is that it will be the same body as the man from heaven. We are made new in Christ. And our heavenly body will be as Christ's body. And so, yes, the first man was of the dust of the earth, and the second man is of the spirit of heaven. But we, we, all of us are the second man, who one day will be of the spirit of heaven. But until we are made new in the new Adam, Jesus we are called now to bear witness in this world. And we are called now to power ourselves by the love and example of Jesus and the presence of God living in us. We are called to live and prayerfully live in a Christ-like fashion so we can become more Christ-like. So Royal Oak, beloved worshiping community, what can you do to put on the likeness of Christ? And how are you living knowing that Christ is living in you? These Bibles that we offered this morning to the kids, what better way to put on Christ than to hear the story of Christ and to hear the story of Christ at a very young age? Last time I visited my granddaughter, my granddaughter goes to a Catholic preschool. She's a hummingbird. And she said grace before a meal. It was beautiful. We are teaching our children to put on Christ, to have Christ living in them. And the more we do that, the more Christ lives in us. With our Valentine's cards and our outreach efforts, we are putting Christ, love, and grace from us into the people that see these. And this morning, we are celebrating communion. 
We are not only putting on Christ, but we are putting in Christ with the meal that Christ said, do this in remembrance of me. And so Paul is telling us that we are to give glory and thanks for the resurrected Jesus. But it doesn't stop with the resurrected Jesus. Because Paul is telling us over and over by so many different analogies that we will have a resurrected body as Christ had and we will be living with God as Christ is. And for that, we give thanks and praise. And for that, we revel in this revelation in this season of epiphany. Amen.